God lives here. Just ask any farmer in North Dakota, and there are a lot of them. God is in the grandeur of the sky, in the purity of the earth, and God resides right here in three tiny little towns. Perched on the edge of the Canadian border, they are linked to the United Methodist Church by faith and circumstance. Bowbells, population 406. Donnybrook, population 90. And the economic center between the two, Kenmare, home of 1,081. They didn't start out being a parish together. That has developed over the years. Three churches that are each 17 miles apart. Uh, three churches that have very distinct personalities but get along very well as a parish. Whether they're churchgoers or not, the folks around here call her Pastor Kathy. One of the ladies in her community uses her car. That's her ministry. She takes people to the doctor, the dentist, the eye doctor. She never charges a cent to anyone. And that is ministry in a town that's about 70 miles from a lot of those things that people need. Kathy Hammond is a licensed local pastor. A modern day circuit rider, her Toyota traverses the trails. Serving this three-charge parish for a couple of years now, she's North Dakota farm stock through and through. She knows these people. These small communities, part of what has happened is big agriculture. They have needed less families on the farms. Education allowed their children to move away. The populations got smaller in the small towns, you begin to lose your barber shop, your beauty shop, your grocery store, your hardware store. Your friends are gone, your family's gone. So much has disappeared. If you can't come to the place where you've been used to sharing your faith, coming together to worship, to encourage one another, boy, a, a lot of hope would be gone if the, if the local church was gone for them. Like the people here, the churches are a testament to endurance. Weather can be harsh, economic conditions volatile, and opportunities limited. But God has blessed this land with rich resources and resilient residents. As the iron horse galloped across the western frontier, these small towns were born along the way. Most of the settlers here were Norwegian and German. Since 1913, the Rockman family claims those roots, and they run deep in this rural way of life. We're trying to empty the truck so we can haul barley now because it's been wet and cold. We can't combine for a while. Like many in this area, Mark Rockman grew up in the Moravian Church. And then when I was probably eight or nine, we finally closed that church and we started attending the Methodist Church. It's like, this is the church in town, so this is one we all go to. It's not necessarily that we're Methodists, but we're Protestants. 19-year-old Brett Rockman works with his dad on the farm. Around here anymore, that's a rarity. Most of his classmates will never return. But Brett decided college wasn't for him. He was planted here, and this is where he chooses to grow. Just take it as it comes. His parents emphasized church involvement for both their boys. We both were raised that way. That's all that we knew. That's what we were taught was the right thing to do. Um, but they needed to have a good, firm foundation for them in their lives and to know how to be a good person. Brett relishes rural life, and faith is paramount in his decision to return to farming. Just God giving us everything week long, seven days a week. It's nice. As faith-driven as he is, Brett confesses that the larger church, the connectional church system beyond his parish, just doesn't resonate with him. I don't feel connected to any of the other Methodist churches particularly. Instead, it's the intimacy of the local church that holds meaning. Even if there's only three people in there, I believe it's a help, you know, to have a few people learning about Christianity and how they're supposed to be. It's worth it for me, I don't know. Money isn't 
everything. So it's always worth it just for a few people. That's where our friends are made. It might be just a, a girl's day out to go to town and shop or go to a movie. It might be helping a neighbor in a tough time. It's, it's our social circle, so you never, you'll see it wherever we are, so there is church. Right now, there is worry. The wet weather is hampering a timely harvest. And what acreage that isn't producing grain or feeding cattle is often being tapped for oil. But as the transient oil workers ramble through town pulverizing the pavement, 90-year-old John Redmer isn't concerned about potholes. Well, Carol Andrew brings eggs, gives eggs away to church, so I bring the carton back. He walks to Bobell's United Methodist Church every Sunday morning, and he misses the good old days. I, I don't like it at all. There's no chance for it to get bigger, because the whole community is dying. Yep. There's no chance for it getting bigger. There's no kids. You know, it used to be, uh, well, oh, gosh sake, a pew full of kids. Now there's none. The heyday for all three towns was really between the 1930s and 1950s. Everyone would gather downtown on a Saturday night and then worship together on a Sunday morning. It hasn't been that way for quite a while. But recently, the Bow Bells Church added a Wednesday supper and worship service. It's attracted a sizable confirmation class. And he doesn't look happy either. No, he doesn't look very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Does God tell us to take care of our bodies? Yeah. Are they kind of a gift from God? Yeah. So we should do our best by them? Yeah. Okay. This service appeals to families that might have difficulty attending on Sundays. So maybe things are looking up after all. But down the road, their sister church is struggling. Kenmare is the largest community in the parish. The local schools serve students from the surrounding communities. Tonight is the big homecoming game. And a Main Street parade helps to populate the town. But while there is celebration, there's also heartache. The aging congregation is watching an old friend wither away the Cannery United Methodist Church. Its 108-year-old foundation is crumbling, and the building is nearly impossible to use. Most members can't even get up the stairs. There are so many people that just want this church to hang on long enough for their funeral to be held here. And at this point, one winter, we kept it minimally heated, and it cost $5,000 to do that. We will never do that again. It's poor stewardship. So uh, there comes a point where you just have to make some tough decisions. While the Kenmare honkers hammer their rivals, the Parish Relations Committee meets at the local pizza hub. They are developing activities that will encourage the three churches to work together in mission. Before they know it, Sunday worship will soon be here. It's Sunday morning. For most, a day of rest. But not for Pastor Kathy. She conducts back-to-back -back worship services in each town quickly scooting from one church to the next. The result of that is probably that my sermons are shorter than they maybe would be otherwise. No one has ever complained though. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Bow Bell service is first. Much like the people in the pews, it is straightforward and traditional. Congregation will linger over coffee and conversation as Pastor Kathy heads down the road to Kenmare. The service is held at the local senior center. It has more convenient access for the members. This Sunday, there is a rare treat. Triana Sabo and her children are here visiting. She seldom has the opportunity to worship with her childhood church family. I grew up with them all my life. Every Sunday when we go to church and during the weeks and stuff, and it's like having lots of grandma and grandpas. <laughs> So whether it's a folding chair that accommodates a walker or a polished pew that holds the hymnals, 
worshiping together is the key. Finally, Pastor Kathy heads to Donnybrook. During the week, it has the pallor of a ghost town. But on Sunday, the United Methodist Church breathes life into the little village. It is the only congregation that has a choir and young families. They are staunchly self-sufficient. If a blizzard keeps the pastor away, they have no trouble holding services without her. One member simply states that this is her church and she'll be here until she's done being here. So when the United Methodist hierarchy threatens to close the doors of any rural church because of expenses, these faithful Christians take it as an affront. We need these small churches. If people didn't still have that friendship, that intimacy, the big churches have their small groups to get that intimacy. We're there. We're already there. Please don't mess with us. Please don't take away what little is left that has worked for so long. And while these United Methodists are fiercely proud of their independence, they also hunger for the larger church to recognize the vitality, the importance of these rural churches. If you live in a city of five million or a town of 350, God's love is present. And we are part of the church of Jesus Christ. And we are proud to be part. And we are privileged to be part. And don't count us out.